This is a question that I get a lot, is how long does it take to rewire your brain? And the answer, three. Hey, I'm Ben Ahrens, co-founder of Reorigin, where we teach you how to reclaim your health by rewiring your brain. And in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how long it actually takes to rewire your brain to make a real difference in your body. The answer is not three, but as we'll get into it, it involves three phases. So first off, in order to give an answer to a question like how long does brain rewiring take, we need to better understand the question. What are we trying to rewire the brain to do? In some sense, you just did rewire your brain. From the moment you started this video to let's say this is the first time you're seeing my face or seeing this channel, new information has come into your senses and in some way it's formed a new neural connection. I once heard it said that everyone in the world probably, more or less, has a Tom Cruise neuron because they can recognize his face. And essentially it's true, whenever you see a new face, your brain is effectively rewiring itself so that it can be more efficient at recognizing that face in the future. How hard would it be if every time we saw the same person, we had to recognize the pattern and consciously put these pieces of the puzzle together in order to understand and remember who they were? Fortunately, the brain is capable of something called neuroplasticity, which is basically its ability to rewire itself so that we can retain new information. So if it's just the basics of neuroplasticity or facilitating new neural connections, then anything you do that's different from you've ever done before, which is just about everything, literally changes your brain and it happens very quickly. But of course, when most people ask, how long does it take to retrain my brain? They wanna know really how long does it take to create a new default mode in my body or a new default response. So if my current response, let's say with health and wellness or health is to be overly hypervigilant or to be anxious, um, how long might it take me to get to the point where I don't feel so anxious anymore, where I can feel actually different, where my, my brain and body are actually producing different chemicals and I don't have to actively do anything to make that happen. And a couple of decades ago, when there was a lot of research into the field of what they call habit design, they looked at this 21 days period to form a new habit. They've since extended this out to about 62 days is the consensus to really form a new habit and have it stick. And we know that one of the main factors for creating neuroplastic changes that last is repetition and consistency. It's nice that we can make immediate changes in the brain. For instance, if you practice a different routine, let's go back to that stress example. Let's say anytime that you find yourself being or feeling anxious, you can actually practice a new routine. You can take a deep breath, you can relax your shoulders, you can even take 10 deep breaths, and by the time you get to the end of it, you will probably feel much better, which is amazing if you think about it. It's awesome that we can actually change how we feel in real time. But I think what most of us are even more interested in is changing our default setting, is changing how we feel and function long-term to the point where we don't have to think about consciously always taking breaths and shifting our state and you know doing new, new habits. It just becomes who and how we are. So when a lot of people come to Reorigin, and Reorigin is a program that teaches people how to retrain their brain for chronic health conditions, the question there is really, how long is this gonna to take to create a fundamental shift? And I think a better way to think about it than how long is it going to take me to fully recover, for instance, is what are the three phases of healing and recovery? A framework that I found that can be very useful to understanding how long things might take is this three phases of development. The three phases are isolate, integrate, and improvise. So this is how we get to that state of what's known as automaticity, where again, we don't have to consciously think about putting on our running shoes and going for that run, but we just find that we wake up in the morning and we're naturally adopting that new habit. So the first phase is isolate. This is where we've identified what it is we wanna change and what it's going to take or what activity or exercise we need to do to make that change. And we practice that activity with repetition in an isolated manner. So if it's a breathing technique or if it's a new reaction or response that we want to train ourselves into, we actually can do that in a sort of dedicated manner. Now the second phase, is to integrate that into our everyday life. 
For me, you know, the goal of a neuroplasticity program is not to be one more thing that you have to add on to your already busy and overwhelmed life. Instead, it should fit into your existing life. It should complement it, and it should provide you with a means of gradually shifting your orientation so you can end up where you really want. And so this second phase is about using those tools that you practiced in the first phase of isolation, and you're now integrating them into your everyday life when you need them, right? So something comes up, you now have this new tool, this new response that you can practice. And the more you practice it like this, the more it goes toward the next phase, which is improvisation. Now, for, the, for anyone who's ever learned a musical instrument, you know that you also have gone through these three phases of development. Let's say you're a guitar player. At first, you had to learn every single note. You had to isolate it. You had to just do scales and practice those in isolation and repetition. The second phase was integration. Now you're in integrating those notes and those scales into chords and into melodies. So you're starting to make music. And the final phase for what in musicians we know as mastery is improvisation. Now they've gotten to the point where they've done all of the tedious work and they can just play, right? So this is where we want to get to. We want to get to this state where we're not even thinking about it. And by going through these three phases of development, isolate, integrate, and improvise, we find that we can reach that state where we simply look back one day and realize how far we've come and that we are now feeling and functioning as we would like to, what's more optimal to our health and well-being. The good news is that we know from a scientific perspective that this is entirely possible to reach that state of automaticity. And you have already done it. I'm sure there have been things that you didn't know how to do in the past, whether it's tying your shoe or riding a bike, that you now don't even have to think about. And we know that when we follow these steps, it doesn't even necessarily have to take that long to get to that level of mastery. Typically, and what I've seen from working with people for over a decade, from personal training to habit design and neuroplasticity for chronic conditions, is that each of these phases can take anywhere from 30 to 90 days. And oftentimes, it seems to be closer to that 30 day per phase duration, such that by the time we've reached a total time of 90 days, people are starting to get into that improvisational state. So if you are considering brain rewiring or brain retraining, I would say give it at least 90 days, but optimally 6 to 12 months to really see those neuroplastic changes take hold. And if you're interested in learning more about a program that lays these steps out for you and exactly what exercises to do, then check out the link below this video to re-origin.com. Again, I'm Ben Ahrens, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.